Hi, I'm John Carter. I'm sorry, who? Exactly. Jan Carter, released in 2012 and is directed by Andrew Stanton, who is behind such films like Finding Nemo, Wally, -E, and Finding Dory. So he seems like one of those directors that Disney has locked up in a bunker somewhere, and whenever they need a director for one of their animated pictures, they just unchain him and let him loose for a couple of months before they put him back in. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. And this film is starring Taylor Kitsch, Lynn Collins, Mark Strong, Dominic West, and Willem Dafoe. And this film was a PayPal recommendation from one of my subscribers and a huge, huge thank you needs to go out to Chris Carter. You recommended John Carter. I, I can't imagine why. Chris Carter and John Carter, all working for Mitch Carter. It's, it's all, it's all full circle. But Chris, thank you so much for the support for my channel. If any of you want to make a recommendation or make a PayPal donation to help support me to grow this channel bigger than what it's been for the last couple of years, you can click on the donate button on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do. Just leave your movie recommendation with your donation. And if I have access to it, I will watch, review it, and expedite it to the front of the line. So again, Chris Carter, thank you so much. And I've actually been meaning to watch this movie because I've actually heard some pretty good things about it. It's just one of those movies that I haven't gotten around to, and it seems like this is a movie that that's the story for a lot of people. <laughs> Jan Carter is a deserted soldier during the American Civil War. However, during one of his breakaway battles, he is magically transported to this strange desert terrain, where he starts to have close encounters with these green, strange-looking CGI aliens. Come to find out that John Carter has been transported all the way to Mars, or as the natives would call it, Bossoon. I bet the author who wrote the original IP for John Carter was probably sitting at a bar watching like a bassoon soloist, and he was like, I need to come up with a name for Mars for the natives. Hey, I'm sitting at a bar, and hey, there's, there's a bassoon soloist playing, and he's rocking it. Soon? Bar? Bar soon! Ha! And all of a sudden, John Carter finds himself swept up in a war between two different tribes of people, and then there's a third tribe trying to, to, to beat the others because reasons. It kind of has that Dancing with the Wolves avatar type storyline where, hey, we have our fish out of water, and for some reason, because he's the lead character, he is the answer to all the problems, and he gets thrown into this war between two different factions, in this case, three different factions, and he's the one that can kind of combine them all and bring peace to everyone, because he's a, a foreigner, and reasons... Jan Caddy. I remember seeing a lot of promotional material for this movie leading up to the original release. And when I say leading up to the original release, I mean like maybe like a month before. I don't recall like like the a year before that movie came out, or heck, even like a couple of months before that film came out. Then hey, here's John Carter. Go see this movie, everyone. That would just seem like they were making like a, a last minute push for people to go see this movie because what is this movie? Who is John Carter? I, I, I don't know. This kind of seems kind of cool. There was no calling or need for me to go see this movie. Because, again, I don't. who is John Carter? I don't know who that is. Apparently this film is based on an original IP that was written in the early 1900s called The Princess of Mars, and Barsoon is the first entry. It's like a serial novel series, I guess? I'm sure there's someone out there who is going to definitely correct me on that. But it got me thinking, why not call this movie John Carter of Mars? That, that actually sounds kind of cool. And the logo that they shine at the very end of this movie, the, the J and the C and then the, the kind of cool looking M, that's a cool looking logo. And people love logos. They like to attach themselves to logos. Why didn't we use that here? Just wish they would have called it John Carter of Mars. It would have I, th I think it would have made this movie even more marketable and probably would have done better at the box office. See, there was a period, kind of in the late 2000s, early 2010s, where studios were like, hey, let's throw all monies at our film to make it just so cool and have us set the record for, hey, this is the most expensive movie ever made. Big companies like Warner Brothers and Disney's all throwing it at things that probably could do well, like Batman or an Avengers. But then they start doing it with all of these unestablished 
IPs. And it's like, well, where are you? You're setting yourself up to fail, guys. This movie cost over $350 million to make. For, for an unproven property. Why, 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 why would you do that? You can put that budget to, say, an Avengers film or a Batman film because those are established properties that globally everyone typically knows and typically loves. So people are, are definitely going to go out to see that. But you put $350 million to an IP of John Carter? What, what, what is that? And you're just setting yourself up to fail. This movie lost a ton of money and not by the fault of anyone, I, I think, in the film, because I think the film is actually very enjoyable, but how, how could this thing <laughs> make money when it's an unproven property like this? It was just a time where studios were thinking like, oh, hey, let's throw more money at the problem and that'll, that'll bring back our returns. And no, it's not. It's about the story and about the character and about the advertising and attaching the story and the character to the audience going to see it. You know, start off small, put a small budget to the first installment, and then if it does well, then go to sequels. It's, it's a simple concept. But here they're treating this like this is Avengers 5, and it, it is not that. So aside from the stupidity of the business side of this movie, I think that the actual film itself is very enjoyable. Taylor Kitsch plays our lead character of John Carter, and, you know, I, I feel bad for that guy, because he keeps trying to become that next action star, or at least a, and the next big thing, and just keeps attaching himself to all of these things that are just are... They're not destined to do well. <laughs> X-Men Origins Wolverine, John Carter, Battleship. Miss Hez. I think part of the reason is because I don't I don't get a lot of personality from him. I, I see sparks of it here and there, and you see sparks of it here and there in this movie. I, I think the character of John Carter is actually pretty cool, so it kind of elevates the stock of the actor playing it, but I don't think the actor elevates the character at all. It's the other way around, which probably is not, not a good thing. It's not terrible, though. It's just I think anyone could have played this role. It's just Taylor Kitsch is attractive, and it's probably why he's here. But I like this character of John Carter. He is a flawed character. He's a deserter. He's not really really a hero in any sense, at least the, at the beginning of the movie. But then when he's transported to Mars, it's our typical hero's journey character where he learns to, to believe in himself and believe the inner strength that he has. Also the outer strength that he has on Mars, we'll get to that here in a couple of seconds, but he learns to just become a hero and he does that and it's, it's the hero's journey and how, how can you deny that because it's one of the greatest stories ever told. When he is transported to Mars, because of the different atmospheric densities, John Carter is so used to Earth's atmosphere that he is able to jump leaps and bounds and be able to lift up things that are, you know, would be impossible here on this planet, but on Mars, of course he can do it. Granted, of course, this property was written in the early 1900s before we knew anything about Mars, and we actually had landed on Mars with robots and satellites and things like that, so... You know, you, you suspend your, dis your disbelief with all of this, but it's still a good time, and I like the atmosphere of Mars, too. If Mars ever did have life, which I would like to think that it did, maybe millions and probably billions of years ago, but if life did exist, it probably looks something like this. Desert, desolate lands, a lot of dust, a lot of sand, not a lot of water anywhere. Plus this idea of green Martians and white Martians kind of brings me to Martian Manhunter from the DC universe. They, 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 actually, they probably got it from this property. I like the score that we get from Michael Giacchino. It's, it's, I mean, it's, he's one of the best composers working today. So anytime I get to hear his compositions, they're, they're great. It was actually a very interesting choice because the first time that John Carter, you know, realizes that, hey, I have these powers and I'm not going to run anymore. I'm going to face an entire army and just slaughter them all. Typically, you'd get something like, you know, ramped up and a good, like, hero theme. But when he's doing it and when he's slicing through all these characters, it's an interesting choice because it's, it's almost like a ballad. And it's a very emotional and sad music choice that is playing. And we get flashbacks of when he's running to his home that was burned down. And he sees his wife and child's remains. 
it's actually a pretty sad scene, even though he's, it's kind of, it's an action scene, so he's cutting through all these people. I just really like the, it, it's not the obvious choice, and I like that choice from a composer. So it seems like I'm, I'm gushing over this movie, and there's a lot to, to love about it. I think the visual effects are really stunning. The, the green aliens, the green Martians, I don't know the names of the people, because that, if I had any beef with this movie, it's, there's a lot of names being thrown at me, and I'm like, I don't know who or what and, and why. Seriously, in the first five minutes, we get names of this race of people and this race of people and this city and this city and then this alien type of people and they need to do it to to to, to bring on... And I'm like, what? Is... I, am, I am so confused. Oh, they wear blue capes and they wear red capes. But sometimes the capes you can't see. So I'm, I'm seeing a battle and I'm like, I have no idea who's who or who I'm supposed to root for. But that's another tangent going back to the visual effects. I think they're actually pretty stunning. You can tell that a lot of the budget went to the visual effects of this movie. But when we get to our, our story and our plot, yes, it is our, our hero's journey. And we see that, that transformation that John Carter goes through, but kind of the, 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 the background stuff, Lynn Collins' character, who they try to seem, you know, make her seem independent. She's, she's a badass woman here, even though there's really just one scene that does that, and the rest of the time she's in scantily clad clothing, and they make her out just to be a damsel in distress the entire time. You just see the screenwriters realizing, like, whoa, wait, we're really not doing any female empowerment in this movie at all. Um, let's do a rewrite, and hey, that first scene where she meets John Carter, let's have her kill some of the, the evil people. That'll make her seem like, like a badass. And it does. But then she's, you know, betrothed and, and she's put into this really sexy looking wedding gown for like the whole last half of the film. And we have to save her. And she falls a lot. And John Carter jumps and saves her a lot. And we have an evil warlord who is marrying the princess just to, to destroy them and become the overall king of the planet. I think that's what happened. He's chosen by these warlords who are acting on behalf of this this goddess of the planet or of the universe. I that whole part of the of the film I was kind of lost because again, all of these weird strange names, I have no idea what's going on. But hey, there's Mark Strong, a bald Mark Strong, very pasty white in this strange looking like alien garment who can transform into any form he wants. It, it just, it was weird. The plot is cheesy. It's actually very predictable, but I'm also having a good time with it. And I think a lot of people would have a good time with it if they would have gone to see this movie. And I for one wish we could have gotten sequels. But of course, when you greenlight this movie for over $350 million, and you're not gonna make your any profit on it, the studio's not gonna greenlight a sequel, of course. That's why you need to start off maybe with 50 million with, with a budget for the first installment. It has more of a chance to do better and to make money and to, to make money for the whole studio. And then you greenlight a second one. And then you have an established IP that more people are gonna go see for the second one. It's business 101, people. But I'm smiling, and I'm having a great time watching it, and I think a lot of people, a lot more people need to see this movie than than who have, so if you can, it's I'm sure it's on Disney+, Plus. it's a Disney film, so just check it out. I'm gonna give John Carter four out of five Blu-rays. I like it a lot. All right, everyone, now usually comes my favorite part in my videos where I pick which movie I'm gonna be watching next. But of course, since this one was expedited, we are going to be continuing on our original schedule that we had. Thank you for everyone who has recommended and supported me. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, leave a recommendation below this video or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter and leave your recommendation there. Again, if I have access to it, I will watch, review it, and give you a shout out on the channel. Of course, if you want that expedited, just leave a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel. Leave your movie with the comment of your donation, and I will get it done as quickly as possible. So guys, have you seen John Carter? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before, and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button, and make sure you hit that bell, so you know the next time I release my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time. In the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.